Now, uh, reading through your book, I mean, moving on to Empire, it seems like your experiences were almost uh, seem to be like night and day for you, uh, because instead of uh, sunny California, you were in old foggy London town. Now, yeah. there had to have been uh, some adjustment into being over on the other side of the pond. What sort of uh, adjustments did you have to make um, in you know how you perceive editing working with a European staff? Well, I had a very lovely assistant, a guy named Phil Sanderson, who has unfortunately uh, passed away now, but uh, he, uh, <laughs> the cutting rooms were sort of Dickensian. They were, uh, there was no central heat. So he'd come in in the morning and turn on a space heater, which they call an electric fire. Um, he would get there an hour before me and turn on the electric fire so my room wouldn't be, you know, ice cold when I walked in. and. Uh, you know, the, the English and the Americans are said to be two people separated by a common language. And there are so many terms uh, that are different in the UK from what we're accustomed to. Um, so it's, you know, the usual Brit Yank kind of figuring out what the other is talking about kind of thing. Um, and, you know, and the film equipment is also different. The way they work is different. So uh, I had to sort of get them to work my way, uh, but it was, uh, that wasn't a problem. But it was, I enjoyed working with the British crews, although I, I could never understand, they would have these enormous um, breakfasts late in, late in the morning, like 10 o'clock, they would have this enormous breakfast, uh, sort of, you know, ham sandwiches or something. And, and then at lunchtime, they would go to the pub and they'd, they'd drink pints of beer and they'd come back in the afternoon and they'd be completely smashed. And I don't, I don't know how they could manage it, but this is, you know, and then, uh, so anyway, it was, it was, it was an interesting time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess uh, if you're gonna have an afternoon pint, you might as well. Uh, but uh, that's the imperial point, you know, the imperial gallon is bigger than the regular American gallon, you know. Oh, wow. When you talk about a pint, it looks to me like a quart, you know, the, their, <laughs> pints, their pints are enormous. Now, uh, a major difference that you had uh, working with Empire was that you actually had the ability and the opportunity to visit the set during shooting as, yeah. you know, well as visit the creature shop. Let me ask you, you know, the first movie you didn't get you know a chance to do any you know on set stuff at all but do you think this differs how you approach editing certain scenes when you're actually seeing them shot in person no no that's nothing to do with it i mean it's entertaining being on the set and seeing you know watching the shooting and so forth but my approach to the cutting it has nothing to do with what i'm experiencing on the set okay so uh so i guess uh I mean, when you, well, I mean, I guess you, you get a chance, you know, particularly on the set and they're still shooting and you don't have, uh, you know, anything to edit and you're just kind of waiting on them. It gives you the uh, chance to get into a lot more shenanigans. Um, was there any uh, specific relationships or stories you got uh, to build on set that you'd like to share with us? Well, I don't know about shenanigans, but I remember I was watching them shoot a scene where, where uh, Han arrives on Cloud City and uh, Vader is already there waiting for him. And the doors slide open and Han pulls out his gun and Vader using the force snatches the gun out of his hand and you know, it flies toward him and he catches it in midair. So they were shooting, they had shot the scene of Han having the gun yanked out of his hand. He was, he was holding the pistol like this and that at the edge of frame, there was a wire attached to the tip of the pistol you couldn't see the wire and then on cue, they yanked the wire and the, and the gun went out of frame. And then they had a shot, sort of a handheld shot of the gun flying through the air and the cameraman followed it with the camera. And then the last shot was gonna be Vader catching the gun. And they had, they were trying to figure out what his arm action would be uh, if they played it backwards, they thought, We'll do the same trick. We'll yank the gun out of his hand with this wire, but we have to run the film backwards so it looks like it's flying into his hand. So they were trying to figure out what the arm motion would be 
And I'm watching this and I'm thinking, why don't they just toss him the gun? So I went over to the AD and I said, why don't you just toss him the gun? He says, oh, well, he's got the mask on. He'll never be able to see it. And, and, and David Prowse says, try it. I think I can do it, you know? So they toss the gun and he catches it. And that was it. But they had been trying to work out this complicated, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, you, you have such a practical approach to things, which I think is, uh, you, know, um, you know, it's so refreshing when you get, uh, you know, guys that just kind of like overthink what they're trying to do. And, you know, sometimes the easiest approach is often the, uh, the, the most effective, you know? Yeah, the simplest thing. So now when it comes to the Star Wars uh, franchise, my absolute favorite sequence in the whole thing is the final duel in Empire between Luke and Vader. And, uh, you know, it's built up so well with the pacing of the film, and it's shot just poetically with all those um, generational themes kind of coming to a head. So let me ask you, how did you want to approach this sequence? And, uh, you know, how did you uh, kind of, you know, continue to build tension, but still have such a consistent flow of action? Well, again, you know, I'm, I'm uh, following the director's lead. Kirshner had worked out the action and, and uh, the shots of Luke hanging in that, uh, I don't know what you call that space that seems to go on through infinity, the, mm-hmm. the hollow core of, the, of Cloud City uh, with the lights and so forth. Um, the camera had to be in a very particular position for the uh, force perspective background to work. So um, everything was pretty sort of, you know, fairly well determined. Um, Some of the more complicated sequences uh, involving special effects I discovered in films give you uh, less flexibility than you would have in in an ordinary uh, non-special effects sequence because everything has to be so carefully thought out and planned. Um, So there's usually, you know, less flexibility uh, more potential for creativity and things that aren't so so affects reliance, you know. Yeah, and uh, I mean, you know, that whole, um, you know, that whole sequence, I mean, it's leading up to probably the most important, you know, scene of the franchise, the revealing of Vader as Luke's father. Um, when you first read that twist, um, what did you think? Did you actually think, uh, you know, it was, I, I know James Earl Jones quoted, you know, that he thought that Vader was lying, but what was your take on that twist when you first read it? Well, I didn't read it. I was It was revealed to me in post uh, by George. We, I think they recorded a different line on the set so that oh. he didn't want that to get out. So he wrote something like, Obi-Wan killed your father, you know? Yeah. So, um, so, you know, when he revealed it to me later, I thought, wow, that, that's an interesting development. <laughs> uh, didn't expect that, you know, so. In fact, I went back years later and I looked at the script and I said, what did it I thought, well, what was in the script? And I went back and I looked at the script and that page is missing. That page is missing from the script. Oh, so he just omitted it. I mean, I mean, and you know what? I, I guess it's just like a generational difference as well, because, you know, nowadays a twist like that would get leaked by someone on social media and then people would go into it. It wouldn't just have the weight that it uh, kind of has in retrospect. So I'm really glad that uh, that movie kind of came out the time that it is that it did. 